from Down Under. Just a little update on where I'm at in my little CNC world. I'm doing a bit of uh, CNC turning on the Tomac 1100. I'd really like to have a um, Slant Pro lathe, but um, the amount of work that I get for it makes it difficult to justify at this stage. To bring one into New Zealand, it'd be about 20,000 New Zealand dollars just for the basic machine by the time you got the freight costs covered. So it's a bit hard to justify. So I'm just going to do a video on um, some latest bits and pieces to do with turning on the 1100. I'm just starting it up now um, for the beginning of the run and the new day. And what I do in the morning is after I've switched on the machine and path pilot is reference or home the machine. Um, but some of you all know the Tomac reference uh, switches or homing switches are not highly accurate. And so it's probably best to back off on your DROs on the X and Y or, or uh, in this case X and Z by maybe two hundredths of a millimeter away on center and then run apart um, and then um, measure it and um, make the adjustment that's required to allow for the errors in the um, Tomac switches and also for thermal um, expansion and contraction if the temperature changes and allows you to make an adjustment for tool wear that might have been getting borderline from the day before. When I tighten up the part in the chuck I have a, a zero marked on one of the scroll keys here that means that I'm tightening the same scroll key and this means that um, and also I have a floating, what I call a floating chuck on, on this back plate so that I can clock it up true with a dial indicator using that scroll key till it's running perfectly true and that way each time you put a part in it repeats very accurately. So let's just switch this on now and make a bit of noise. So this, this uh, enclosure is the uh, what I call the access enclosure, it's got a big tilting front door um, but there's a few downsides to that so I put a sliding a sliding door in it so it's now kind of a hybrid um, tilting door enclosure and sliding door enclosure it's got quite a big sliding door so that I can do most of the uh, part changes and adjustments without having to lift the whole front of the machine. But when I do need to get really good access, I can lift the whole front of the machine. So I'm just facing the blank here. I've got other videos on this process and it's really important for CNC work, especially turning when you're producing a long ribbon of swarf or chips, that you have a good chip breaker and the correct speeds and feeds that allow the or force the chip to break into little pieces. The whole point of a CNC is that it runs automatically. It doesn't really matter how e efficiently or quickly it runs, as long as it runs automatically. And then you can go away and do something else while it's running. So it's earning you a wage while it's making parts. So this is the 1100 with the access enclosure front tilting door lifted right up. Um, I only do that occasionally now um, when I was setting up the machine or doing maintenance. So just carrying on with my earlier point, um, the whole point of uh, earning money on a, on a CNC machine, of machining multiple parts, is to have it running automatically. If it's running automatically and you can leave the machine to run, then it doesn't really matter how efficiently it runs, as long as it runs. Um, um, it's a low cost machine and it doesn't matter if it takes two minutes or four minutes to make a part it's um, it's earning you money making the parts so let's just go over how you can control the swarf you don't want a ribbon of swarf it'll all tangle up 
So here's a close up here of a chip breaker. Now I use high speed steel and grind my own. Um, you can see in the top there is a scallop ground here and that's ground with a diamond top shaking with a diamond wheel in that direction. These are very steep rakes because it's a, a setal turning tool and if you can chip break in a setal and you can chip break much more easily in aluminium it's very difficult to chip break in a setal and you have to have everything right so it's not just a matter of having the correct geometry of the tool but then you need to set the the revs of the part or the cutter in this case the part and the feed rate to be uh, pr produce the chip coming out of it that it's coming out like a very stiff, rigid, thick chip that strikes into the scallop of the top of the tool and actually causes it to shatter and break. Well, that's right. I was just going to show you after I've ground the uh, the, the basic shape, I then lap it with this with one of these fine diamond wheels, diamond wheels, diamond stones, super fine and just with that sort of movement generate the radius on the end you can just get the right sort of finish now that will throw a burr up if anything a minute burr up vertically but that isn't a problem while on the subject of tools I use um, ASAB 17 which is a high grade Swedish high speed steel. Not all high speed steels are equal. A high cobalt expensive high speed steel when it's lapped to the right shape will last much longer than a low cost high speed steel. Almost like the difference between tungsten carbide and high speed steel. And you can use the same tool to rough and finish scores of parts without getting any appreciable wear. Just a few other things that I've learned in recent weeks. If you're running a plastic and um, wood and so on, you get little particles of floating in the coolant or submerged in the coolant. And um, they can get into the coolant lines and get into inside the nozzle and block up your whole system. So I found a, a way of getting around that is to, this is my coolant tank just to put a, um, a rag, like one of these um, rolls of uh, synthetic rags, whatever they're called, um, and let the coolant drain through that, and that separates out the little particles of wood and uh, plastic, so it doesn't get into the coolant system. And slowly you filter and clean out your system. Let's see if I can show the actual chip breaking in place. Now, when you're taking a finishing cut, you have to have a slow feed rate. And then you'll get a ribbon of swarf. Now you can tolerate a small amount of ribbon, but too much of it will tangle up the process. So I'm using a, a fast feed rate and a slow RPM to generate a, a very stiff chip that will shatter when it hits the little scallop. You can obtain very good um, tolerances. I want to respect client confidenti confidentiality, so um, I can't really show you details of the part, but it is possible to machine parts on the mill using it as a lathe to diameters um, of within half a hundredth of a millimeter. That's about within quarter of a thou repeatedly. Um, so it's 
very acceptable for most work.